Good morning, friends. How you doing? Well, I hope today is Friday. I'm in a strange place. Okay. Um, so I'm in Los Angeles, but I'm in a hotel and I cannot even believe this conference that I've been invited to, but I'm going to bring you guys along. Most of the world is now familiar with TikTok. Um, it's an app where if you're not familiar, um, really young people, to be honest, they're 15. So they are making videos where they're like dancing. They do skits. It's very like Vine meets Instagram stories. I don't know, it's a very unique platform. And um, a lot more people are making fashion content. Um, the 15 year old's parents are jumping in. So you have your 30 somethings, 40 somethings, and then their parents are jumping in. So you have like your 60 somethings. Um, I'm so excited to be here. I'm really just here like doing an anthropological study. I wanna learn more about the app, how to work it better. Um, I've been making videos. So if you haven't followed me on TikTok, you know, follow me. I had a video go viral during fashion week, which was kind of cool. Never had that happen so we are here for their first like black uh, history month creator summit and it's amazing um, I'm gonna show you really quickly the gift box that I walked into last night I got here late because I was working are you serious there's a pair of Pumas there's a sweatshirt there's Beats headphones there's a bag of Fenty Beauty like and then under that is another like really cute um, customized bag for us to take everything home I am going to go learn and maybe we'll learn a dance or two from these. The kids are so talented. Um, and I know a lot of y'all, my babies, there's a lot of you guys who are under like in that 15 to 19 range. Um, so if you're following along my life here, follow your girl on TikTok and um, support, you know what I'm saying? So let's, let's get our day started. Good morning, gentle humans. It is Saturday. Um, beautiful morning in LA. I just uh, woke up getting myself together. Um, it's the last day of this TikTok conference. And I really wanted to, so I didn't vlog a lot of the conference because one, there was endless copywritten music. And two, um, I was trying to be focused and be present. And there was a lot of speakers and surprise guest and really, um, I don't know, just really a sense of community building. And um, I learned a lot. So here's the thing. <laughs> and um, I'm actually going to do a video talking a little bit more about my work history. And um, I know for many of you who are like newer to me, you haven't been um, around since 2012 when I sort of jumped on the internet um, and started creating content. And I often get a lot of questions about, um, you know, what I do, how I make money, um, why I'm afforded certain opportunities when the outward perception is, if you're new, is that I don't have like a million followers on my platforms. So we're going to talk about that. Um, but because a little bit, uh, a little bit of background really quick. So uh, TikTok reached out to me recently. Um, they reached out before and they reached out recently and said like, we really love your content on other platforms. We think you should be um, creating on our platform. Try it out, see how you feel. We'll like, you know, help you um, in terms of like um, best practices and things like that. And so a lot of times apps will identify people that they think could be successful on their platform. Um, I've had really, beautiful, incredible experiences with YouTube, um, having similar feelings about me thinking that I could potentially be, you know, a positive voice on the platform and inviting me to certain events and things. And I'm surrounded by people with these enormous platforms and I'm sort of like the little guy, you know? And um, so basically they were working on this Black History Summit. Uh, it's basically called Make Black History. And it's a creator summit um, focused on the black creators. And so TikTok, as you are probably aware, if you if you are on that platform, is incredibly young. It's not young like, oh, I'm 25 and I'm popping young. It's like 15 young, 16 young. And so um, there are an influx of people who are older joining the app. There's people in their 20s now and in their 30s and 40s and beyond. Um, one of my favorite people to follow is actually this grandma. I think she calls herself like Grandma Susie or something. She's hilarious. Like she's just this fun, 
wild lady who, who will just do anything like because she is having the best time in life just doing her thing um and there's a couple of people like that there's a lot of parents on there who i guess their teen kids are on and it's like they do dancing videos and they do all this like like hey i'm on tiktok to embarrass my kids like kind of fun stuff which i also like um so they're you know obviously focusing on building the platform and, and so building it you need more than just kids right so i think that that's how I got invited. Also the fashion vertical. So being me, being very grown, being um, afforded a lot of opportunities in this life, I've done a lot of things, I've seen a lot of things, I've been in a lot of places, amen, thank you Jesus, um, it can make you a little jaded, you know what I mean? Like you feel like you know a lot or everything if you're a Sagittarius and um, you know, uh, but one of the things that I try to work on is like being really self-aware. Like I know my, I know my positives, but I also am very aware of my flaws. And one of my flaws is to be a little jaded and a little like, hmm, you know, what, why, whatever. Um, and so because I try to work against that, I went into this weekend with a really open mind and I was like, listen, there's going to be a lot of young people here, but they are the cultural navigators. Like it's without a question, the same way that when we were teenagers, making up dance moves, setting trends that the world follows, um, you know, so you have to pay attention to what they're doing because it's just interesting. And for me as a marketer and as someone who is obsessed with trends, not just fashion trends, trends in pop culture, I love to watch uh, kids do a thing and watch how it, you know, sort of takes over the world. The issue with that is that often black kids um, are the absolute cultural navigators. They are the ones setting the tone, doing the dances, picking up the, creating the music, creating the art, uh, painting the pictures, sculpting the sculptures, whatever. And it is um, not made mainstream until someone else replicates it and often leaves them out of the history of how it all came to be. Whether it's your favorite slang, whether it's your favorite, you know, renegade, renegade, that whole thing. Um, I'm so excited for that young lady who like has been featured in the New York Times and is, you know, just shot Ellen, like amazing. So all of this to say, um, I came to the weekend and I knew it was gonna be young, but when I walked into the hotel lobby, I was a little freaked out, not gonna lie. It was like, you know, when you're in high school, and you're waiting for the bell to ring or the doors to open and everyone's outside and everyone's just like congregating, everyone's loud and just having fun, happy to see each other. Good morning, what up boo, you look so cute. That's what it was. And I was like, <laughs> okay, like I'm like young and popping, but like I feel like a grandma here, not just like a mom, like a grandma. I was just like, what the heck? Um, so I could have just, you know, sunk into myself and freaked out and been super antisocial, which is what I started to do, very honestly. I just sat, like, we got upstairs and it was kind of like a welcome dinner. I sat on the couch, I got a drink, and I was just like, yo, staring at the pool, like, what are we gonna do now? <laughs> um, luckily, there was another grown up here. Um, there's a couple, but one that I bonded with, her name's Q, she's amazing. Um, her uh, at is so wigged out, which is so cute because she does a lot of like sew-ins and weaves and hair and wigs and stuff. Gorgeous lady from Atlanta. She walks up to me, she goes, a grown up. And we legitimately hugged. <laughs> We were so happy to see each other. So we just sort of clung to each other all weekend, made a friend. And she makes, you know, she's another grown lady making content on the platform and there to just learn. And, you know, we really want to learn about like the app and like, um, you know, how to use certain features and I don't know, just connect with other people. So I didn't really think I was going to bond with any of the kids. Um, but I ended up making a few like friends and it was so sweet. Like we, they did a really good job at, uh, forcing people to be outside of their like friend groups. So for those of them who knew each other, um, it wasn't just like you could click off and then, you know, just kind of, um, be in your little like tribe. Uh, we had to get out there and talk to each other and um, they really encourage people to do collabs and like um, stuff like that. So while there were a lot of, of course, music and dancing videos going on, um, I filmed kind of like a, what my favorite outfits are because that's what I'm doing on the app. I'm just like sharing what I like and what I see, either it's my outfits or when I'm at events and stuff, like it's just fashion focused. 
and um, got to see some really slick looks that I was like, y'all are really killing it. And yeah, I met some cuties that like, you know, exchange information, hugs, hugs, kiss, kiss. Like they're just so sweet. Sorry, I have to switch hands because I don't have a tripod. So I'm holding her, um, holding you guys, holding you in my hand. Um, so I'm sure this story is a little rambly, but um, the big takeaways for me outside of like the technological stuff that I learned is to be open, to push yourself out of your comfort zone always. Like even when you feel like you know what is being said or being shared, be keep an open mind and keep an open heart because someone will say something that you can take. Um, one of the people who spoke was Tracy Ellis Ross, who the stand level is through the roof. There is no meter to measure how much I adore and respect this woman. She is inside and out a stunning human being. And I've had the opportunity to hear her speak many times. She's often at beauty events or, you know, she's one of those people who stays really connected to like the people. Um, so I see her, pro she's probably the celebrity that I see the most like at things. Um, always time for a kind word, always time for a photo. And she said some things that just resonated so deeply with me. Um, that I, I really just, it was, you know, just about self care, about sleep, about, um, meditating, um, about, you know, keeping sort of peace and, um, you know, creating boundaries for like social life and work and how she can kind of get it all done in a day. And, um, one of the things she said, I wrote down on my phone, which is dead, but I can't, so I can't quote it exactly. I'm going to put it on the screen for you because I don't want to mess it up because it, it was really important um, and my phone's dead, so I can't say it to you, but I'm going to put it on the screen. I want you to take a second and say those words out loud to yourself and see how you feel. Well, Great alignment of sound. <laughs> Found a beauty. Found a beauty. So we're taking some pictures. I harassed this lovely lady. And I was like, can I take photos of you? So we're, we grab these off the table and we're doing these fun little portraits. I'm gonna pop them in. But can you even, can you deal? So aside from Tracy Ellis Ross, uh, Nick Cannon came to speak. And I've always found Nick to be incredibly inspiring. Um, my old PR agency represented him for a long time. And some of my really close friends were his agent. I was not. Um, and he said some really encouraging and great words. I mean, his, his, his talk was a little opposite of Tracy's in terms of like, he was like, I don't sleep, sleep when you're dead kind of vibes. And she was like, I take care of myself. I sleep. But they were both saying the same things in terms of like working hard, um, keeping the quiet voices down and something that he said that I loved, which was, uh, someone had asked the question about, you know, how do you navigate like negativity or whatever and he was just like you have to operate at a high frequency and so low frequency um uh people which he was like our haters you know people who are trying to drag you down people who are being negative and we all experience that you know whether we are content creators and we have people in our comments like even the smallest thing we all grew up with like you know if you don't have anything kind to say don't say anything you know how much stuff i see on a daily basis that i don't like that is not my taste why would I say it? Like, what what does that add to my life or to theirs to say, wow, your sweater don't don't like it. You know, your dress is not cute. Who does that? You know, I don't know. Um, and people think that they're doing it out of familiarity or kindness or love. And it is absolutely not. It's never received that way. A tangent. But he said that. And I thought that that was really brilliant. And he was just like, you know, I don't even I don't even acknowledge uh, that kind of stuff. And I thought that that was really important. So outside of the the talkers, speakers, um, they're I'm sorry, I'm staring out the window. Here's why. OK, now do you understand why I am keep looking off camera? Because this is the view. Okay, I'll try to stare into the lens. Um, so aside from that, we did like a little workshop and they had a really good takeaway um, for the whole day, which was what are your, it was basically about negative self-talk and it was like your limited, limited beliefs. And what do you, you say, I want to this, but this. And so you could say like, I want to design a shirt 
but I'm afraid my art's not good or I want to learn how to speak a language but I don't think my pronunciation will be good or you know just this negative self-talk where you cre you're creating or you're listening to other people's limiting beliefs and so we were to write down some of our goals and what the limiting belief was for that and to then um, this was a Tracy action item Tracy said to take that limiting belief and create a positive around it so create or to create an affirmation around it and to say it to yourself because we can all say like you were kind you were beautiful you were good and that's very general but when you give yourself an affirmation that directly relates to you you're speaking to yourself and you're speaking to that piece of fear inside of you that is so ingrained that you can actually you know access that fear and dismantle it which ugh. This woman, you guys, are you kidding me? So brilliant, oh, amazing. So I hope you don't mind this like chatty style video. Um, I just wanted to share the experience because I was afforded the opportunity to hear these incredible people speak and really grow from some of the experiences I had. And I think sometimes even secondhand, you know, um, hearing it vicariously through me, um, some of it might resonate with you and you might be able to apply it to your life and feel, um, you know, I don't know, renewed or restored or refreshed or encouraged or inspired to really, you know, bet on yourself, take leaps of faith and to also put yourself out there. Um, I think even another takeaway is the fact that like, I'm not someone with a million, you know, subscribers, followers uh, on any platform. And I joined TikTok and I think I had like a couple hundred people um, when they reached out to me. It doesn't take being the biggest to be noticed. You have to be authentically yourself and be excellent. And so with 300 followers, you know, I guess three weeks ago, they reached out and now I have like 3000 because um, I've just been diligent on the platform. Same thing with YouTube. We're at a strong 50 something K. I thought I would have had 100,000 a long time ago. Honestly, I thought I would, but um, it's not discouraging me and it's still creating amazing opportunities. One, we have an amazing community um, between us together where we, you know, we do fun things, we share. Um, you guys share so much with me beyond just your outfits and things that I buy that you purchase too, but you share really positive experiences with me as well. And that's so, so fun to be a part of. And then I'm also still working with, you know, really phenomenal brands. Um, we're doing a lot of fun stuff. Most of my collaborations, to be honest, are in, are on Instagram. Um, but yeah, anyway, it doesn't take, you know, having it all figured out. It doesn't take having all the people watching to uh to be noticed and to have success so just wanted to share that and i hope it makes you feel good this view i can't get enough of you guys do i need a place with a view i don't know i feel like i might i feel like i might um all right camera's heating up i feel it getting hot on my finger we're probably gonna get shut down soon so i am going to have breakfast and pack up my stuff go back to my apartment i'm staying a whopping 15 minutes away from my home in this hotel and then i'm gonna go about my day so thank you so much for watching i hope that you enjoyed this video love you mean it bye